What's new in Do More Rail 2.8? Let's find out. First on the list is some new hardware. The new Bricks Palm module, the BX P Ecom EX, adds a secondary Ethernet port. But unlike the previously released BX P Ecom LT, which only has server capabilities, this new Ethernet Palm has client capabilities. Of course, just like the Ecom LT, the Ecom EX retains its server capabilities. It's not a client only Palm. But client capabilities mean you can use the following protocols and client type instructions. Next is the new BX HSI04. This new high speed IO module is functionally equivalent to the previously released BX HSI01 and HSI02 modules, with the exception of being able to count pulses up to 2 MHz in frequency. That's eight times faster than the HSI01 and HSI02 modules. It can also generate output pulses at this same 2 MHz frequency. Its input and output voltage levels are differential TTL, in other words, 5 volts DC. It is internally powered, so no external 5 volt DC is needed. Also, the front connector is different than the HSI01 and HSI02. You will have to have a zip link system for wiring. Also, there are six new regular I.O. modules. Starting with the new discrete input module, we have the BX16NF3, which is a 16 point TTL level input that can be wired for syncing or sourcing. Next, there are four new discrete output modules. These are first, the BX16TF2, which is a 16 point TTL level output module. Unlike other discrete outs, it's powered internally, meaning the commons are zero volt ground, and the on state output pushes five volts at up to 20 milliamps. Next, the BX08TRZ, which is an eight point relay output dry contact module. A dry contact means it has no noise suppression, this means in the off state, leakage current is zero. This module comes also in a 16 point version called the BX16TRZ. And finally, in the discrete output category, there is the BX05TRS 1, which is a five point high current relay output module in form factor C. The contacts are rated at 8 amps at 12 to 48 volts DC or 24 to 240 volts AC or a half amp at 100 to 125 volts DC. And last but not least is the new discrete combo module, the BX16CF3F2. This module is an 8 point TTL level syncing or sourcing input with an 8 point TTL level sourcing output. This sums up the new hardware offering for Do More version 2.8. Now we'll move on to things that have been added to the Do More PLC CPUs themselves. First is Ethernet IP adapter. This feature is only available on the virtual PLC, which we call the simulator, or SIM, and for the Bricks-style Dumont PLCs that have an Ethernet port. Now you can make your Bricks PLC be an Ethernet IP adapter that uses implicit messaging. It will support up to four adapters, each with two memory blocks that can be T2O, that is, target to originator, or O2T. Once you get it configured the way you want, it is also possible to generate an electronic data sheet, or EDS file, with the press of a button. A major enhancement added to Do More version 2.8 is the HTTP web server and REST API. This feature is only available for the simulator and Do More brick style PLCs that have an Ethernet port. The web server is accessed in any web browser by simply using the Bricks PLC's IP address as the URL. When this is done, a web page is pulled up that has several active tabs offering various information about your Bricks PLC. It even has a data view page that you can configure yourself. Also, it's possible to make your own web page. The REST API allows access to the PLC's memory elements via a URL in a web browser, or more powerfully, a web client programming package. Both return data in the popular JSON data format. Several new instructions were added. First, with just the SIM and Bricks PLCs with an Ethernet port, FTP client capability was added. This is implemented in the new FTP get and FTP put instructions. Then, for the SIM and all Bricks PLCs, the hardware config instruction was added. This allows you to manipulate certain I.O. configuration settings at runtime. Then, four more instructions for any style of Do More PLC were added. The Index Enable Stage and Index Disable Stage, which allow the setting or resetting of stages based on a variable index value. Also added is the DM Logger instruction, 
It combines the need for selecting which Ethernet port to use, since you can now have two on a Brix PLC with the addition of the new POM, with the need for using PrintScript. This instruction broadcasts your own formatted string data to any PC running Do More Logger, and very handy for troubleshooting. Finally is the test num instruction. It sets the value type to one of five possible values depending on the input value. For instance, it can test a real number for IEEE 754 floating point classifications, like NAN or positive and negative infinity, etc. We also added a server whitelist for security purposes. This is also available, of course, on the SIM and Brix PLCs that have Ethernet ports. Per a server function, it lets you specify a whitelist of IP addresses and or IP address ranges for a specified function, like programming, Modbus TCP, and others. Remember how difficult or obscure it seemed when you decided you wanted a string with formatted data? You usually couldn't remember what the string formatting or print script functions were called or their syntax. Thus, their use in string print, email, and now the newer DM logger instruction can be a bit difficult. But in version 2.8, the original editor's multi-line text is not required. Instead, the newer editor is table-based with intelligent dialogues, making it easy to see all the options for all the different print script commands. This means you won't have to memorize or look up the options in the help file any longer. Forms for all these now exist at your fingertips. Many enhancements have been added to version 2.8. Among the most notable are the ability to program master relay type rungs like this one. Here, X0 enables three other subrungs, which have three different calls. The master relay pattern can be nested within the same rung. This eliminates the and above join ladder editor compiler errors. Next, there are now two types of deadband behaviors for PID loops. The original behavior, type 1, freezes the error term while it is within the deadband value. The new behavior, type 2, zeroes out the error term. Next, the axconfig instruction now has a dynamic graphic that helps you understand the behaviors of your axis encoder's feedback selection. Next, JSON Pretty Print tool supports nesting level based background colors for ease of reading. Next, Several new system nicknames have been added, mostly because of the new Ecom EX Palm, referred to here as ETH2. Finally, a new dialog was added to help you with the settings you need to know about when debugging using DM Logger. It pulls together the system elements you need to be aware of with full explanations. There are over 30 other enhancements added to version 2.8. You can read about them in the updates.pdf file. To see this file, open up the start page with View, Start Page, and then click on the What's New icon in the upper left. Finally, many bugs and anomalies were also fixed, most involving the latter view. For details, you can read all of them in the updates.pdf file. And remember, to see the updates file, go to View, Start Page, and then click on What's New icon. That concludes What's New and Do More version 2.8. Thanks for using our products, and thanks for watching.